welcome to our 2022 Pioneer 270BH. It's starting right in the back bumper here. If you just reach in and pull that cap off, you're going to find your sewer hose. Take note of those two gears in the adapter here. It's how we'll be hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper back here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things that bit fresher. And that cap just presses into place. Straight up in the corner from there, you get your cable and satellite inlet. It's just a coax cable plug into there, fire up at your TV location. Right around the corner, you get your exterior shower. So you get that little latch there, you're just gonna pull down on it. You can open it on up. You get the standard head with the standard three foot hose, hot and cold water. So the dog's out getting muddy, you can spray them off before he gets inside. Once you're done, you're just gonna tuck that hose back in, click that head back into place, close it back down. Another step ahead from there and you get your power inlet. So as you pop that open, you're gonna find a little notch in the bottom corner there. It's gonna line up with this notch here. Just gonna press those in together, give it a little eighth turn, that'll lock it into place. And then you get the threaded collar there to really lock it down. Following the cord back, you're gonna find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites are gonna have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you've got the power to do so. Right down below that, you get your city water inlet. So basically you're just gonna pop that cap out of there, take your water hose and plug it into there. Turn on the water and then it'll just pressurize the lines throughout the unit. Right down underneath there, we get your sewer system. So that cap, if you just kind of press on it and give it a turn, you can pop it out of there. You see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer hose had. So that'll attach the same way where you're just pressing it on, turning it until it clicks. On the left, you get a black valve, sorry, on the left, you get a gray valve. On the right, you get a black. So that black valve is controlling your black tank. Your black tank is still from your toilet. So that's of course going to be your dirtiest water. So you'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to the gray. Your gray tank is going to be filled from your sinks as well as your showers. So typically cleaner water. Dump that last, just help keep that hose as clean as possible. Downside the unit right towards the front. Get one end of your storage compartment here. So as you open that on up, you just get the little finger on the side there, holds it open for you. Inside of here, you'll find your water hose. Inside of the water hose, you'll find your park adapter. So your 30 amp into there, 15 to a standard outlet. Does see straight through to the other side. Around the front of the unit, you've got your battery box back here. So as long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back or your seven pin into your tow vehicle, that battery is gonna be charging for you. These two knobs there, if you loosen them off, you can push them back, open up the flap and you get access to your propane tanks. For the video, I'll just pull them off. Then you can show your changeover in the back there. So I believe it's currently green. Nope, it's currently red. All right, perfect. So red is just letting us know that there's no propane in the system with the arrow pointing over here. So as we open that up, You'll see that then goes green, letting us know we've then got propane in the system. If it goes red while you've got that tank open, you're just going to close it off. Just flip over to the other tank and run off of this one while you get the other one filled. In front, you got a power tongue jack. So on the left is it up is up, down is down. On the right, you get the light switch. Little rubber plug back there. If you pull that out of the way, you get access to the manual override port. So if your batteries were to die, you can still run it up or down. Other end of your storage compartment here. So inside of there, you see that manual jack there that's for running that front stabilizer. This one up top here is also for your uh, slide out as well as your stabilizer jacks. For your stabilizer jacks, they are electric. So you got your stabilizer right here. You press and hold extend and the stabilizer makes its way down. I will just point out real quick that it does equalize. Right? So it's not gonna level the unit, it's just gonna stabilize it. And once it contacts the ground, you'll hear the load on the motor. Once you hear that, you're going to want to stop. If you're to continue extending, you can actually strip the gear set right out of those motors, rendering them useless, right? A couple of steps back right behind the entrance, we get your hot water tank. So you get that keyway there, you're going to line it up, you can line, pop it on open. You all your controls for turning it on are just inside of the unit before we ever turn it on. Then we just want to hit that relief valve right there, make sure that bit of water comes out. That bit of water coming out of there is just letting you know that tank is full, it's safe to fire it up, and you're not going to burn anything out by doing so. Once we get inside and fire it up with propane, it will go over a reset procedure, and the button that I'll refer to is just right here. Once you're done, just flip it back up, lock it down with the keyway, and there you have it. As marked by the low point drain there, right underneath we have those low point drains. So the two long ones are going to be your low point drains, you just open up those valves, allows the water lines to drain themselves out. The purpose of that would be if you're leaving the unit for a while and you don't want your water going stale or stagnant, you can drain it all out before you go. Or before winterizing the unit, you just want to get all the water out before pumping antifreeze through. The short one beside it is the drain for your freshwater tank, so I'll just let that drain out right here. Filling that freshwater tank is just right here, so you just pop that cap out, your water hose will go into there, turn on the water, fills up that tank. 
cable and satellite outlet, as well as a GFI protected outlet. So if you're looking to have TV outside, you can. Straight up tonight, you get two exterior speakers. Right in between them is your stove vent. So of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it. So you just got a fan inside to evacuate those fumes. You want to make sure that this flap is opened up so that those fans, so that those fumes make their way outside. It is just a little flap there. Once you're done, you're just going to press it into place until it clicks. It just prevents any sort of dust from kicking up in there. Service port for your fridge here. Nothing really back there for you to worry about. It's just for service, really. Down below that's the exhaust for your furnace. So if you're ever running your furnace, just want to make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Black tank flush here. So over time, you may notice after having dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, even though you know it's for, for fact that it's empty. Typically, it's just some debris inside of that tank hanging between the probes causing that misread. So what you're gonna do is just take your water hose and plug it into there, turn on the water, and that'll just flush out that tank, get rid of any sort of debris that could be causing that issue. At both doors, you'll notice this little T-latch there. So you just get that little handle. Just slides into there and holds the door open for you. Your steps are a little bit different front to rear. Just grabbing that handle back here, pull it straight out, flip that last step over. And this entrance just goes into your rear bathroom, so we won't be using that just today. Switch for your rear stabilizer jacks just around the corner there. And then right in the back, you get your spare tire, of course, with the tailgate storage. Straight up from there, you see you are pre-wired with an observation camera. So if you're looking to, to go that route, it's getting installed right there. So now we'll make our way inside to the unit. You get your assist handle here, just up 90 degrees and it falls into place. Then you can open up your door. Like I pointed out in the back, you get the little T-latch just to hold it open for you. The blue handle here in towards the center. And then you can pop it on open, your steps will slide out. Okay. If you're looking to change the length of them, you just get that little tab there. You can press that in. You can extend or retract the legs as needed. So first things first, once you get inside, you get your fire extinguisher right there. That's standard, pull the pin, point and shoot. Up from there, you get your monitor panel. From top right corner, you get your water pump switch. So as you turn that on, it just turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. In the center there, you get your gas water heater. So as you turn that on, you get that little red light there, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence is started, that light will go out. It'll try that three times. And if after the third try, it hasn't fired up, it's at that point, you'll go and use that reset button that we've shown you. So stood right here, you can hear the click of the igniter and the whir of the flame. We know that tank is good. Down in the bottom is your electric water heater. So just as you turn that on, just fires it up with electricity. Top left over here, you get batteries. So you can see your charging currently, right? So 12.3 is a charging voltage. 11.7 is good. 11.2 is low. Fresh tank, as you fill that up, you go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. Right beside that's your, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. That's just the uh, switch for your uh, Wi-Fi router or booster. Just turn that on, just boost your Wi-Fi signal. Up from there, sorry, on the far left, you get your awning light outside. On the right, you get your interior lights. Your slide out's right in the middle here, so as you press and hold out, that slide will make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, you're just gonna hear some clicks from the motors, letting you know they've reached their stall. Once you hear those, you'll let go of the switch. Right beside that's your awning. As you press and hold extend, that awning will make its way out. Once that awning's fully extended, you're gonna see a little black flap as well as the black the metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna wanna stop. If you were to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case your fabric will be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So there's our flap, and there's the tube, we'll stop right there. Now if you're going to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water anyways. So what you can do is grab either arm, front or rear, and you're just going to pull straight down on it. And then you can see it changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. But if you like that angle better because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you just want to make sure these guys are back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending them. And then we'll press and hold the track, that awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just watching to make sure that your fabric is over top the tube. And another thing to keep in mind with your awning is that it does catch a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. There you go. 
So I'll come up into the bedroom here. Light switch is just right up on the wall. Blinds throughout the unit are just on this tension system, so they just kind of sit wherever you leave them. A little bit of closet space on the side here, identical to what's on the other side. You just hit the little light up on the wall, that little light switch there. USB outlet's on that light as well, as well as a power outlet there. It is also accessible from in the bed, so it's kind of a CPAP storage. If you pick up the foot of your bed, you do get access to the storage compartment there. Up and top, into the head of the bed, you get a little light. Like I said, the other side closet's the exact same. Up in the wall here, you do have a TV backer, so straight up from there you'll find a power outlet for it, as well as your cable and satellite outlets. Emergency exit here, you're pulling that red tab to get rid of the screen, take this handle here, throw it outside, hop on out. And then just some closet space here. The sliding door, super simple, it's just got its travel, there's a travel latch there, so just undo that and slide it. A little bit of closet space, I guess you could call it that. And then your entertainment area, so you get your TV backer in there, cable, or sorry, your antenna outlet right here. Turning that antenna on, you just hit that button there, turns on that light, letting you know it's turned on then. Then you got your power outlet for it. HDMI cable is hooked into your stereo. This collection of wire right there is actually the antenna for that stereo. So power's in the top left there. If you hit it again, you can just kind of choose your dims. Yeah. Mode, you can cycle through all of that. Band to cycle through all your bands on the AM, FM. In display, you can change all that. Alarm, sleep, pretty straightforward, excellent little stereo. Pressing that knob, you get into all your settings. And then the knob itself is, of course, volume. And then more outlets down below. Bit of storage down below all that. And then into the slide out here. You get the lights, just on their own center switches there. And this couch here does fold out, so you pick up the base, kind of create a bed out of it, flip it back up, and then the centerpiece does come down, get your cup holders in there as well. And the dinette, your table, if you just kind of take that and wiggle it up, you can get it out of the legs, the legs will do the same thing out of their bases, just wiggle them out of there. The, the dinette will then sit down onto either ledge, then you'll take your back cushions, fill in the center and create a bed. In the kitchen, you get your storage up top here. So inside of here, you're gonna find that binder. In that binder is all of your owner's manuals, all of your keys, any remotes, anything like that for the unit, you'll find right in there. That outlet there is for the microwave. Down below that, you get another little light just on its center switch there. Mobile head there at the sink. Hot and cold water course, dual basin. Drawer storage down the side. As well as underneath. If you're looking to winterize the unit yourself once it comes time, this panel here just has two screws in the bottom. You can pull those out of the way and you get access to the hot water tank behind it. Microwave up top here, pretty standard, just like home. Down below that, you get your arrangement. Fan on the left, plate on the right. So that's that fan that you want turned on the flap outside opened up so that we're evacuating our fumes. Stove cover just flips back. You take the knob there, turn it over to light, hit it with a sparker, and just fires right up. I'll just mention that the first time you go to use your propane system, especially if you've been away from the unit for a while, can take a minute to fire up just because it's got to clear all the air of the propane lines. It's perfectly normal. For the oven, you're going to open it up, press that right knob in over to that pilot, grab a lighter, and then right in the very back, you can get that pilot light going. Once you get it going, you just want to hold the knob in for another couple of seconds, then you can release and the flame will hold itself. Turn up to your desired temperature and she'll fire right up. Once you're done, if you just turn it down to pilot, it'll hold just the pilot light for you. But if you're traveling or leaving the unit for a while, you just want to make sure that's right off. Beside that, you get your fridge. The freezer up top here, if you open that up, you get your control board on the top. So on the left there, if you've got that button that flush, that's it turned on, over flushes it turned off. On the right here, if you have the button on flush, that's it then running on auto. Auto is first going to look for AC power. If AC power is taken away, it'll automatically flip over to gas. And if you're out boondocking and you want it solely running off of gas, just going to have that button come out over flush and it'll run just on gas. If you were to get that check light there, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up at that point, just off and back on to reset it. So freezer up top and your fridge down below. Temp selection's right in the back corner there. As the sticker says, up is colder, down is warmer. Down below that's the return there for your furnace. If you're ever running your furnace, just make sure it's not blocked off. Pantry space beside. Down below that, you get your converter. Press the top and center, and she pops on open. 
get all of your breakers down the middle there. Whenever a breaker breaks, it's gonna sit in the center, so you just wanna turn it back, turn it off and then back on to reset it. The fuses are all on the right side. The bunk space is here, so your lights are just in the back corner. They're the exact same lights that you had in that front uh, closet space. I just can't quite get back there, but you have the little switches on the side with the USB outlet as well. Same thing down below with the same sort of emergency exit, pulling the red tab to get rid of the screen. Ladders, those would pop out there. Do keep in mind that it does contact the slide out there. So if you're running your slide out, you definitely want to make sure that this ladder is up away properly. Thermostat in the top corner there. So as you press that bottom bar, it's going to wake it up and then it'll come into fan low. Fan low is first going to just be moving some air. There's no cooling involved there, just moving the air around. Fan high, same deal, just moving your air around, no cooling. After fan high, it'll come into cool high. So at this point, the compressor will cut in and out as needed, leaving the high fan on all the time. Same idea for cool low, compressor in and out as needed, low fan all the time. After that, it'll come into cool low auto. So that's where it becomes an on-demand system where both the compressor and the fan will cut in and out as needed. Only ever using the low fan though. And then you get into cool high, same deal on demand with using the high fan. With the air conditioner going, you basically got two different options. You got the two louvers there, you can have them both closed off, in which case we're using all of our ceiling ducting to move our air. Or if you open them up, it just dumps all of its air into the living room here. So when you first come out to your campsite, you want them open, cool off this area as quickly as possible, then you can close them off and start moving the air throughout. After cool high auto, if you hit that bar again, it comes down into heat, turns off the air conditioner, turns on your furnace. Your furnace will be moving its air through the floor registers. Temp selection, of course, at any point, it's just with your arrows there. And after heat, it just comes back down to off and then just cycles back around. Straight down from there, you get a power outlet as well as your LP detectors. Propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off just like a smoke detector would. Smoke detector is up by your TV or the entertainment station, at least. There we go. And then lastly, we'll just make our way into the bathroom. As you open that up, you get your light switch up on the wall. On the left is your lights. On the right is your fan for your ceiling. Then you got that vent there. You're just gonna turn that knob to open it up. All right, simple as that. Then you get medicine cabinets. Down below that is your GFI protected outlet. Just on the left, reset in the center. Hot and cold water at the sink. As you open that up, you get storage down below. Be in mind for your drains and your water lines in the back. Toilet just flips on up, you get your flusher on the right side there, and then you get your tub, hot and cold water, of course, with the standard head and hose for your shower. And then just right behind me is, of course, that rear entrance that we showed you from outside. And really, that's about it for this unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call 204 237 7272.